guys, if you are pregnant with twins or have newborn twins on the way or already in your home, this video is gonna serve as everything you need to know about breastfeeding newborn twins because tandem feeding guys, it is not easy and it doesn't really come naturally. So here's everything I've learned as a twin mom. I breastfed my twins for a year and a half. I also breastfed a single baby for two years. The main thing that I want everyone to remember and get in your brain is that fed is best. My first tip will be to find a great lactation consultant. You may be able to access one for free through your insurance or through your pediatrician's office. Otherwise, they charge. They can come to your house. They could do a virtual consultation. While I'm not an official licensed lactation consultant, I am a consultant for those who don't have much twin experience for them to advise their clients. I'm gonna put all my information in this video and I'm gonna link below on the products I recommend. You can do it with nothing. The more products you can add to your arsenal, the easier it's gonna be for you. The main product that you're gonna need is a breastfeeding pillow and a space to breastfeed. Now, breastfeeding one baby versus two, you're gonna have some different needs. One baby, you can just kinda lounge on your little teeny tiny nursing rocker or whatever. Twins, you need more space. You really need a two or more person sofa or you can use your bed or the floor. And a twin specific nursing pillow is gonna be the best. And you wanna have it high enough that you're not bent over hurting yourself. My favorite was my breast friend twin nursing pillow. I found the size to be perfect for putting the babies on each side and it, it rose them up to the perfect height for me. I also tried the twinsy pillow, which a lot of twin moms love but I found it too flat. So when I was using that, I had to boost it up with another pillow under it. And that just gets really tedious to be having like juggling all these different pillows and stuff. If you have had a C-section, the Twin Z might be a better option because it's open in the front and it won't be bothering your incision. It's also great for a lounger for your twins. If you can afford both, I say do it, but check your local twin groups because you can often buy these really cheap, I'm talking like 25 bucks. You might even find them free. Along with the pillow, you're gonna want to have some burp cloths, and these are great for burping the baby, you throw it over your shoulder, and they're also great rolling up, and you can use them to get the baby in the right position on the pillows. And then for yourself, for the mamas, you will want to have a nursing bra and nursing pads. So the nursing pads will catch the leakage because they do leak, mamas. Um, my favorite was Johnson & Johnson. They're disposable. They have a little sticky tab on the back. You can use uh, washable ones as well. Bamboobies are great. Another great thing to have, and this is something else you can find in any of your local mom or parent groups, is a baby scale. Now you can find these used, again, really cheap, like 25 bucks. You could even, if you really need to, use the scale at your pediatrician's office. They might let you come in and use it without even having an appointment. This is handy if you really are not sure if your baby is getting enough milk at each feed. One way to know just by observing your babies, if they are crying with tight closed fists, really fussy, this is likely they are hungry. And if they're still doing this after you're done feeding, they probably didn't get enough milk. Whether it's you're not producing enough milk or they're not able to nurse efficiently, that's the question. This is where a great lactation consultant is really helpful. They saved my twin breastfeeding experience. At two weeks, my twin A was not regaining the 10% that they typically lose uh, after giving birth. She was just there and her sister was starting to gain. And uh, I went to my pediatrician, they have a free lactation consultant once a month and I randomly caught them on the right day. She, you know, assessed my breasts, that I had enough milk and that wasn't the issue, but for some reason, baby A wasn't nursing efficiently. She wasn't, didn't have enough energy basically because she wasn't getting enough milk. She was just like so drained and the poor thing, oh my God. So anyway, the LC showed me how to feed her and feed her as a single, not tandem, so I could focus on her latch because she was really having trouble. So we were doing that and then I was weighing her before and after each feed to make sure she gained the right amount of ounces 
and then whatever she hadn't gained enough of, I was pumping and feeding her that extra amount each day. And we did this for two weeks until she caught up the weight and she was able to breastfeed, getting the right amount of ounces. And then from there we did tandem feeding for the rest of the one and a half years and it was amazing. A scale can really help you to make sure if you're really paranoid or concerned if they're not getting up enough milk, you can weigh them before and after. Just don't become obsessed with this. Just check it every once in a while maybe um, to feel confident that they're getting enough and making sure that they're having enough wet diapers and that their hands are, you know, kind of like that. Like relax when they're sleeping. They shouldn't be like this all the time. That's generally not a good sign. Another thing that the lactation consultants can really be helpful with is latch pain and nursing pain. So yes, when you first start breastfeeding, your nipples are gonna be sensitive because they are not used to this amount of action, am I right? Uh, my mom always said, like, you gotta toughen them up. Before you have your baby, you gotta be, like, scrubbing them with towels and stuff, and if you wanna do this, do it. But you really don't need to. But you shouldn't have any pain. And if you have pain, it's because the latch is not right and you need someone to help you get the latch right. They say, you know, you're, you treat it like a hamburger and you squeeze it and you get it in there at the right angle. But it's hard to figure that out, guys. It's hard. So having a professional there with you to actually show you what's right and show you what's wrong and you will feel the difference. When it's right, it doesn't hurt. It might be a little sensitive, but it shouldn't hurt. My first baby, I was like cracked and bleeding the first few months. It was horrendous, and I can't believe I never went to a professional. With my twins, boom, that, that second week when we saw the lactation consultant, night and day, amazing, oh my god. <laughs> so, another good reason to go see a professional. If you're not comfortable to do tandem feeding, if it just feels overwhelming and scary, you can feed one baby at a time. But you're gonna lose some milk because the other, when you have a letdown, the other breast will kind of like spray out. So you gotta catch that with a nursing cloth and you're gonna lose some. So a lot of moms who can't tandem feed will nurse one baby and then pump at the same time from the other breast. <laughs> For me, that's what felt overwhelming. I never did that. But um, during the two weeks when I had to pump a little bit to supplement for my other baby, I did pump in between feeds, which, uh, it can help with production as well if you're really struggling to make enough milk. Make sure you're eating and drinking enough. Your body needs hydration and it needs nutrition. And I know you're like, oh my God, I'm like a walking whale. I'm huge. I need to lose the baby weight. Let me tell you, now is not the time to worry about it, okay? Your body uses a thousand extra calories a day to make milk for twins. One thousand calories, guys. So eat well and get the nutrition you need and your body is going to shed that weight just because you're breastfeeding so don't even diet please don't diet oh my gosh at least not not the first few months just let nature handle it and don't even take out your pre-pregnancy pants for like the first six months don't do it don't step on the scale don't look in the mirror just look at those itty bitty teeny tiny amazing beautiful twins and what your body has done to produce them and maintain them <laughs> and appreciate it. Breastfeeding in public and while you're out and about, guys, this is hard. Everyone has a different stance on this. Personally, I was never comfortable to breastfeed without a cover, so I always used a cover. And when they were newborns, I had to do one at a time. But by the time they were able to sit up, so like four or five months, I would put one on each knee and then put the cover over us and I could tandem feed them together out at a restaurant or whatever, like easy peasy. <laughs> Everybody stares, but don't think of it as a bad stare. They're, they're impressed. <laughs> they're like, wow, look at what she's doing. They're not judging you. And if they are, who cares? Like who you're doing what you need to do to feed your babies. So just do it. I love the breastfeeding tank tops because they allow you to unsnap and just have your breast out without exposing your tummy and your back. They're all still covered under your tank top. So those are amazing, as is a good nursing bra. And I'm gonna put one on to show you how they work. All right, guys, <laughs> here is a nursing bra. This is one that's made for nursing and pumping. You can get ones that aren't specifically for pumping and the inside layer will just be kind of empty, but I'll show you. So they have um, two clips. So they have the outer clip, which comes down 
And so this one is for holding a pump flange. We'll stick in here so you can pump. And then if you take this down, you're ready to breastfeed full on. These are amazing. <laughs> I recommend wire free because wire can kind of squish in here and lead to mastitis. I was huge guys. My breasts were bigger than their head. Seriously, no joke. Still, underwire, I really recommend against it. You can get non-underwire soft cup that are still supportive and comfortable because your breasts will get engorged and painful or tender and you really need support around the clock. And also you need something that's gonna hold that uh, nursing pad, right? So wearing these around the clock, even to sleep, they're super comfortable. And then you just like, boom, boom, ready to nurse. So easy, even in the middle of your sleep. If your spouse brings a baby, you in bed, and you can just like on your side nurse it, like, oh, so easy. All right, guys, here is where I'm gonna give you a demo of tandem feeding twins. So I usually did it on our sofa, but I'm gonna use my bed to show you. You can do it in your bed as well. Um, if you do it against the headrest, you'll have something to lean against. I figured out ways that I didn't need help, and it's all about having everything at arm's length and safely. So when the babies are little, generally they're in a swaddle or something so they're not wiggling around, they can't roll over yet, but you still need to be really careful where you put them that they're not even, even remotely able to roll off the bed or off the sofa or something. So this is what I did. Okay, I'm gonna kind of reenact. I no longer have my nursing pillow and I no longer have newborn babies, so these are gonna be my newborns and these pillows are gonna act as my nursing pillow, which you can just use regular pillows. It just won't be as easy, but it's totally doable if you don't have a nursing pillow. I'll have the nursing pillow where I'm gonna sit on the bed. Oh, go get a baby. Oh, here's a baby, and I'll put her here safely. And go get the other baby, and I put her here safely. Or if they're at the rolling over stage, I would put them on a blanket on the floor so that they were safe and couldn't roll off of anything. Then I come, I get my pillow, I sit between them, and you want to have it really right up to your, your breast. And then you're going to get one baby head in the front here, and then the other baby here. So their heads are kind of like touching in the middle almost. They're really cute. And you look down and you're like, oh my god, my little babies. It's so, so precious. <laughs> okay, and then. This is where if they're really itty bitty, you might need rolled up burp cloths to put here to kind of wedge them so they're not rolling away from you. Or if they're rolling too much inward, you could put them here to wedge them there. I forgot to mention, before you sit down, you're gonna wanna make sure you have close on the floor or here, somewhere you can reach it. You're gonna want a bottle of water because you gotta stay hydrated. You get so thirsty mid-feed and then if you don't have it nearby, you're like, oh my God. Where's my water? Um, maybe a snack. Nothing that would, you know, like drip or, or hurt the babies. Nothing too hot. Um, your phone, because the way I do it, you end up hands-free. And so you can be, you know, cuddling your babies. It's awesome, but if someone calls in the middle of it or you want to spend that time getting something done for work or whatever, like it's nice to have your phone able to have it nearby and burp cloths. Okay, so then you have your babies and then you just kind of like take your thing down, take your thing down, and then you just kind of like boop. <laughs> now, if you're new to it and they're new to it, you really have to work on the latch, so that's where you may have to do one at a time, and you kind of like, you know, squeeze it and help them like get it in their mouth right, and then you squeeze it and you help the other one get it in right, and then you can kind of like just monitor them. Halfway through-ish, you're gonna wanna burp them. So one at a time, you can take her off. You're burping her, she's still nursing. Awesome, Blech. okay, good job. So then you put her back on, and then you burp and put her back on. Oh, and keep going. And then when you're done, you burp, blah, blah, put them down, burp, blah, 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 put them down. If you burp them mid-feed, that can help them to not be gassy and not get colic. It can help, but you never know. For a single baby, you usually do both breasts in one feed, but with twins, I didn't even bother. Um, 
when one was not a good feeder, I was rotating them each feed to do the opposite breast so that I wasn't getting uneven. But once they were feeding the same amount, I just didn't even, I didn't even bother to notice who did each side. Okay, so got my bra back on, I got the babies here, and then you're gonna just do it in reverse. Put one here, somewhere safe. You might be that you wanna put her on the floor, if you can reach, or you can put her here momentarily and then transfer to the floor. And then get this off. And then, you know, then you take one and you go change a diaper and swaddle and put her back to bed. And then do the other baby, just make sure that the lights are on or whatever. One time I put one baby back on top of the other baby by accident. It was dark in the middle of the night. Ah! Anyway, that is uh, all about tandem breastfeeding twins. I hope you guys found this video helpful and reassuring. There are a lot of tips for newborn twins and toddler twins and all this stuff and I'm gonna be doing kind of a series on these. I have some videos from back in the day as well so I will put the playlist below, the twins playlist. You can find other videos as well as some great blog posts I've done. I will link those below as well. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to subscribe for more. Bye.